good evening to all of you uh, i am now starting a new chapter that is uh, drainage requirements for irrigated lands uh, which is uh, very essential you know like uh, uh, the water conservation and water application they, they are important at the same time the drainage uh, requirements also are very important if you we are if you, we are not providing a proper drainage you will not be uh, finding a good uh, yield for the program for the sorry for the crop okay so let us uh, go to the presentation now uh, <clears throat> you can see the need of the drainage for plant growth this is very important uh, how we are discussing uh, plants need air as well as moisture in their root zones for their survival it is not that uh, uh, you need only water you need uh, some aeration for the root zone so if you are submerging uh, the entire uh, this uh, uh, you know subsoil under uh, you know submerged conditions it will not plant will not survive of course you can say the rice is how rice is surviving sir no it it uh, aerated through its tubes though it is uh, completely filled with all the voids are filled with uh, water so for every plant there is a, a need of aeration in the root zones so so therefore excess uh, water for excess farm water if any if you are simply putting only that much of water like your sprinkler and drip doesn't matter but uh, if you are putting excess water like gravity surface irrigation uh, any uh, any excess water has to be removed through the drains this is very important okay we have to remove those water excess water uh, after fulfilling the soil moisture deficiency the excess water should be removed properly otherwise what will happen this water retards the plant growth because it fills the soil voids and restrict proper aeration this is what we have been saying so it will fill the soil voids and restrict the aeration so proper oxygen per circulation is very much needed for this root zone okay surface drains are therefore needed for removing the excess farm water for most of the cultivated crops on flat or undulating topography so if um, uh, as per the requirement you should provide the drain surface drains actually there are uh, uh, two drainage systems here one is the surface drains another one is the subsurface drains they are also called tile drains so surface drains if they are uh, useful you can provide otherwise you can go for this uh, subsurface drains on the other hand are required for soils with poor internal drainage and with high water table so where there is a water table is high but uh, there is a poor internal uh, drainage like it is a highly clayey soil okay so then you have to go for definitely subsurface drains or tile drains yeah, subsurface drains also called tile drains if no impervious layer occurs below the farmland and the water table is very low internal drainage may be sufficient and no tile drains are needed suppose if the water table is deep and uh, uh, uh there is no impervious like clay layer uh, below the root zone system then there is no need of any you know uh, tile drains uh, simple internal drain system internal drainage is good enough the maximum productivity of most of the crops both surface as well as subsurface drain are therefore essential so if you want to extract maximum output or good uh, crop uh, from uh, you know yield uh, you, if you want to expect a good yield from the crop, uh, you need to have these uh, surface or subsurface drains. You can see here how uh, the effect of drainage on plant growth. Here, one is under uh, undrained land. This one is a drained land. See, within uh, under undrained land, you can have a during the uh, spring and during this summer. Means uh, you can say here um, our uh, uh, rabi season and uh, summer you can see the if the water level is too much even up to the root zone the uh, growth is 
you know impediment uh, growth impediment you can observe here the little bit uh, down during summer the water level much more growth but uh, not much leafy whereas you have provided a, the drain land here is a drain land you have given good you have given good drainage both in spring as well as summer you have with uh, compared to the spring the summer because water level is down and uh, much aerated much aerated you can see um, the root how the root development here compared to here here uh, here root development is much much denser and then canopy development is much much denser and also similarly the yield yield is higher so this is how the drainage it's not that water alone uh, you if you provide and then uh, other things you neglect you have to carefully plan your drainage requirements also that is very important for any irrigated lands so in this chapter we will uh, discuss some of those drainage requirements layouts and other things okay so then let us go for one by one this is a <clears throat> um i think uh, this uh, figure has come very late anyway uh these are all the some of the uh, things okay this is a behave you know a surface inlet uh behave grave uh, great and uh, you can see pit water see some of this uh, water is simply taken down here subsurface drain here and uh, uh, this is called surface inlet draining surface inlet draining the surface water into a tile drain both uh, uh, from the surface we are directly connected to an inlet um, and then there is a subsurface drain which is called tile drain also so um, uh, around this a pipe you can put a concrete collar and of course sealed joints are there okay these are the arrangement self explanatory there is a some a, a kind of you know uh, water uh, stagnated here no this is a, a french drain it is called what is happening it is a low lying and then uh, water is stagnated here you will have a, a blind inlet this is a called blind inlet uh, this is a, a trench excavated after the uh, for this dimension you can see um, then there is a pipe or tile drain provided this uh, excav excavated uh, trench is filled with uh, uh, corn cobs cinder or other uh, porous material here excavated uh, slope of uh, trench this is this is a uh, filled with uh, some porous material uh, below which there is a uh, pipe uh, pipe also uh, porous so like this you can uh, uh, see this water table is always maintained up to here not allowing up to uh, the root zone see water table is here only okay so this is the surface ground level okay this is another arrangement then uh, cross section of tile drain pervious soils okay if uh, there are soils are pervious simply you provide this uh, pipe drain um, back filling uh, with the sand and excavated material itself we need not put any other material you simply put the same material here but there is a, um, a pipeline uh, you, you, not necessarily always uh, you have a depression here it, it is a general one you can put a uh, pipeline here okay and then uh, automatically it gets drained the water gets drained so that is how the water table is uh, kept low you can see here it is not allowing up to top it will be within this uh, you know pipe uh, then uh, pipe level here if the uh, only difference between the earlier one this one is uh, back filling with excavated uh, earth um, some graded filter is arranged around this 
therefore, uh, backfilling of expired depth to some extent, but there um, graded filter is arranged. That is an inverted filter. Okay, you can say here also a similar effect. You can observe the water table is maintained at a certain depth below the root zone, not up to the root zone. It is attaching. Okay, so um, this is a cross section of a tile drain with a less pervious soils. Earlier we have seen pervious soils. This is a gravity outlet for tile drains. You can see uh, uh, there is a outlet drain. Uh, normally, it is a metal pipe, uh, minimum length of 4.5 meters uh, and a diameter 5 centimeters more than that of the tile. You can see this is a concrete column. Now, what is happening is you are having a for um, a previous pipe, and the water is simply percolated to this. And then this entire water is by gravity flowing, and this is an outlet drain. It will be drop. It will be dropping here. So flood or flap gate here, and this is an outlet drain. So this entire earth water, which is excess found, it will be drained out like this. Okay. Next, here is a, another uh, pump outlet for tile drains. Uh, pump outlet for tile drains. You can see here, um, water is pumped instead of gravity. Uh, the water is, uh, this is a, of course, tile drain uh, arranged and then uh, accumulated over a stop well. Uh, uh, this is a starting level, of course, um, uh, sump storage. You are storing into a well. And then uh, this is particularly in a waterlogged areas, mostly it is uh, observed. Uh, and uh, the water is pumped. And then put into an outlet ditch here. Then this will go by surface drain. Pump outlet for a tile drain. You can see uh, this is a previous tile drain, and then water is coming in, and then uh, it will be stored here, and it is then pumped to the uh, up, and then to a drain. So these are the various mechanisms. Uh, then um, we will see. We will come back again with the video uh, again uh, and to the tile drain layout. Uh, I will stop here. Thank you very much.